To create really engaging paintings, one that really pulls the viewer in, you need to focus less on subject matter and focus more on design and structure. I'll show you what I mean. This is Ian Roberts and Mastering Composition. I was out for a walk the other day in the late afternoon and I saw the evening light hit these trees and I thought, whoa, that would make a great painting. And if you look at the scene, independent of the light, on an overcast day, you realize there is not much going on. But there's the painting that I did of it, 30 by 36, and I'll show you how. Now I adjusted a few things in the photograph. I filled that in so it was a solid mass. I took all the telephone wires and bits and pieces out of there and I took out the cars. Normally I wouldn't do that. I'd just be working from the photograph, but I'm just sort of showing you what I would simplify out mentally. The other thing is, look at this, where I've got one big warm lit shape against the whole big shadow shape. There's a very strong, important contrast there that is fundamental to the image. And look at the structure. I mean, look at the vertical here, horizontal, say, across here at the horizon line to a center of interest. But in addition, Look at the other structural elements of how many pieces are in horizontals and verticals leading up to, plus all these coming back here, leading up to this strong, in the entire picture plane is engaged in all these horizontals and verticals. It is very design driven. And in addition, I'm gradating both that shape and you'll see this shape so they're active and pushing us also into the image. You can see there's a lot of attention given to design and structure before I begin. I did all of the block in and actually most of the second layer all with this one and a half inch chip brush. Now all the colors that I'm using here you can find down below the video where it says show more. It's my standard palette but I've got cobalt blue and I'm using mineral spirits, Gamsol, to thin it out. It's 30 by 36 and so the first layer is going to go on fairly thin. I just want to cover the canvas and I'm gradating this down with cerulean blue and a little touch of phthalo green because as the sky goes from blue to warm at the horizon it has to pass through green. So there's a sort of a green layer there. Uh, probably more exaggerated than you'd see in nature but you'll see by the time it's gradated it works. And then cad yellow lemon uh, with what was ever there and that'll just sort of give us the third each one just being thinned a little bit using that chip brush thinned a little bit with turpentine and our mineral spirits and so chromoxide green ultramarine blue dioxazine purple I'm just wanting to get sort of an the initial green shadowed green color there uh, again with a little bit of mineral spirits and just blocking in very simply here and you'll see that I sort of shift around one green to the next. That one's a little bit darker, probably had a little bit more um, ultramarine in it. That one's a little, got a little bit more ochre in it. It's basically the same color that's just being shifted one to the next. And I'm just you know, continuing to use mineral spirits. But you can see that, you know, you look at the photograph and you realize, and then here's phthalo green and ultramarine blue, or uh, alizarin, that's giving me, you know, a, a very dark color. It's going to be for the shadow right down in that section right at the very bottom. But, you know, you look at that, that photograph I showed you in, in overcast light, you realize there's no subject that's interesting at all. It's the light, that big light lit shape against the big dark shape and the structure. Again, it's not the subject matter. It is more about design and structure. So here I'm mixing the, uh, the cement, you know, the, the road color and the cement color for the sidewalk and so on. Need way more blue in there. It's got to be cool. Now we're getting closer. So I've blocked it in here on, on the street and then now this is the wall. Uh, I've got a little bit more ultramarine so it's such a little cooler on that one just to sort of create some differentiation. But you see it's very simple the shapes, right? I'm just not, there's no details going. This is the color for the asphalt in the foreground. Kind of a deep purpley blue color. And I'm just scrubbing it in. Uh, you know, it's a one and a half paint inch house painting brush and that's pretty much what I'm doing to it as well. So now I've got all the shadow colors in and now I'm going to start putting in the lit side, the evening light. 
And so I've got yellow and orange and I've got a color here with a little bit of mineral spirits. And I'm looking at it and thinking, you know what, it's too dull. It's, I mean, I've put it in, but I'm sort of thinking that at this point. So now I'm getting way more yellow and way more orange. You can see the orange comes in a second. And I get it, I'm just getting a hit of color that says, oh, okay, now we're really making a point of getting this temperature shift vibrant so that it's carrying the painting, creating the engagement, creating the interest, this rich, warm color against the big, cool colors. So that's what I mean in terms of engagement. The engagement comes from creating contrasts. Obviously, there's a subject in terms of trees and road, but it's the engagement of this warm and cool, big masses that is really what the painting is about. And there's the finished block in. You can see that I've put in the tree trunks and the telephone pole. But you look at that 30 by 36, it's a fairly large painting. But if that were an 8 by 10 plein air painting you came home with, you'd think, that's a pretty good design, right? And now I'll show you how I let, so I let this dry, and then I put in the second coat. Now I'm not going to show you the palette this time because the color mixing is almost identical to the last one. But you can see because I'm no longer mixing mineral spirits with the paint, now I just have straight paint, you can see how much richer the color is. But I'm using that same gradation into greens and then cad yellow lemon to get that move from blue to sort of see how green that is. Um, and you know I just put two colors in there and then just, well you'll see in a moment you know, just sort of brush the edge. And then I take a brush with no paint in it at all once I've sort of got them. And then I'm just sort of doing this big sweeping motion to kind of get that gradation in there smoothly. And then now you'll see that as I paint, the paint's thick now. I mean, there's quite a bit of paint on there. But you'll see that in addition, you see the color's not that different when they're just dull colors like that. There, you'll notice I'm getting it darker on the outside edge. So it just kind of gradates in and pushes our attention along that fence into the painting. And then I did quite a bit of painting here on these palm leaves because I'm sort of painting the lights in. And then I'm sort of going back and painting the darks, carving the darks back in it in order to get that uh, interplay of those uh, palm leaves. And here you can see the color is getting richer, right? And I, I even push it further than that. So I'm just really taking the same colors without, and there's sort of a couple of spots where it gets quite orange in the photograph, so I put those in. And then I just had that line straight across and I realized it's too even, so I just pushed it up on one side, pulled it down in another just to kind of break it up. But what I'm doing now is adjusting the edges, where the edge is joining the sky, and then how these palm fronds are sort of, sort of coming in together, sort of give the sense of the fronds themselves. And then it's quite dark where those shadows are hitting uh, the actual trees themselves. And I sort of paint that in and then I've overpainted it and then I'm getting rid of some of the marks because they're too, you know, there's too many marks going on there. But you can see here again, I'm just working on the edge, just making sure that it's a little bit more modulated than I had it before. And then here you can see me just going into the lights and the darks of just pulling that shape together because this is the center of interest. I want us to see it and then get a dark in behind it. And then there's a little bit of red paint on there. There's the gradation I was mentioning in the, in the beginning, that I just have it going darker there and gradated up because that pushes our attention from dark towards light. And then there's that line of paint along the, the road. And then I get a really like a light, thick paint on top of the thick paint that's already there and just draw in the tree trunks, the palm trunks. Both of those go in and you, there's a lot of light hitting those things and so you really need to make them stand out and that sort of thing at the back, whatever it's called, you know, where you, so you don't crash through the, through the railing. And it's thick paint there and dark. So I'm having a lot of paint in order to get this paint. It's all wet now. Uh, and then sort of clean up the bottom ev edge of it here. So you need to use a lot of paint to sort of clean up those edges or to get a light color on top of almost what's, you know, it's almost black, it's so dark. And there I'm just sort of getting some darks in to create some more shape to that tree over there, sort of flicking the, the brush to sort of have it come around the form a little bit. And then I'm putting in the 
last little bit of that blue sign and the, uh, the posts that hold them up. One long, thin mark right down there into the concrete. And then I do the same over there with the other ones. I clean up, because it's man-made, person-made, um, you know, that shape has to be fairly accurate. Uh, then there's that one, and then one big mark right down there for the telephone pole, all through wet paint here. And I missed where it was last by just a little bit, one mark to clean it up, and then there is the finished image. And you can see it works because of this brilliant lit shape against all the shadow stick and the structure. And you might say, well, isn't the center of interest the lit part? But in fact, those two palm trunks are leading us right down to that shadowed palm just below it. And it has the strongest contrast down underneath there. So in fact, the vertical and horizontal are kind of meeting there and creating the structure. But you can see that the engagement of this painting is coming from the design of the contrast of big, warm, lit shapes against all the shadowed shapes and this beautiful horizontal and vertical structure that is holding it all together. I've got a big announcement for next month, so I will see you then. Until then, all the very best and bye for now.